Now, if you were to watch the Akhmet movie, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, it's very interesting. First of all, this movie was made by Harab, so-called Mohammedans, or Desert Harabs, or Bedouins. It shows that they only picked certain verses of El Quran to recite to the Ethiopian Christians. Now, this is known. It's a historical fact. It's provable. It's in their documents and in other historical documents as well. Now, those verses that they chose, that they picked and chose, told about the Immaculate Conception of how Jesus Christos and Ketisden Grimarium, you understand, which was the adopted son of Yosef, was an illustrious prophet in this world as well as in the hereafter. Did the Mohammedans really lie to the Ethiopian Christians, or did they not tell purposely the entire story, the full story? Well, here's the story. In the month of Rajab, the fifth year of the Mohammedan calendar, the first migration of 18 persons, 13 men and 5 women, were cordially received by the Nagush or the king of Ethiopia, whom the Mohammedans say was Ash'amah, son of Ahbar, king of Abyssinia, to seek refugee status in Ethiopia upon request by Ahmed, their prophet, Muhammad. There were altogether 83 people. The Nigush, or king of Ethiopia, whom they say was Ash'amah, son of Ahbar, was an Ethiopian Christian. Some say that he was a Coptic Christian. The list of the first immigrants to Ethiopia among the first Mohammedans or Muslims who were all of the tribe of Quraysh were Jafar, son of Abu Talib, his wife Asma, Uthman, son of Afan, who was the third Khalifa, his wife Rukaya, Muhammad's daughter. Abu Hud Haifa, son of Utba, whose wife was Sahla. Zubair, son of Al Awam, cousin of Muhammad. Musab, son of Umair. Abdur Rahman, son of Auf, Abu Salma al Mukhzumi, whose wife was Um Salma, Uthman, son of Mazun, Amir, son of Al Rabia, whose wife was Layla, Abu Sabra, son of Abi Rahm, Hatib, son of Amir. Suhail, son of Baida, Abdullah, son of Mus'ud. Throughout Mohammedan history, Ahmed, the Prophet Muhammad's followers, have always boasted and bragged about this particular event, their flight or hijrah to Ethiopia. It's important to note here that Ahmed's followers came from what's known today as Saudi Arabia, which is an Arabic-speaking country, to Abyssinia, which was, some say, an Aramaic or Hebraic and Amharic-speaking country. The Ethiopians, it was said, did not speak Syriac, Syriac Arabic, so Ahmed or Muhammad's followers had to communicate with them and recite the Quran in an Hebraic dialect. When the news that the immigrants were living in Ethiopia or Abyssinia reached the Meccans, those who were pagans, Bedouins, desert Arabs, Kafiruna, they were very angry. They immediately sent two men with gifts for the Nagush and his Kesasawian or priest to Abyssinia to plead before the Nagush, the Ethiopian king, to send these immigrants back home. The Meccans wanted the immigrants so that they, the Meccans, could persecute them further. The two men sent were named Amir, son of Al-As, son of Wal-Il, and 
Abdullah, son of Abu Rabia. They had a long argument about how these people, the first Mohammedans from Arabia, these immigrants, hated Christianity and did not believe in Getachen Jesus Christos, Yahoshua, Jesus Christ, that he was the son of Ha Elohim. And how Miriam was not the mother of Reboni Yahshua, Getachen Jesus and how he did not die on the cross for their sins. All of these are contained in their Quran and how their religion will take them to hell. Upon this request, the Nigush asked the spokesman of the Mohammedan immigrants to Ethiopia, who was Ahmed's cousin, Jafar, son of Abu Talib, to recite some portion of their holy book, their Quran, that speaks about Getachen Jesus Christos. At this point, he had a choice of showing his faith and if necessary, dying for what he really believed, or telling a half-truth. If you were to watch the Ahmed Muhammad movie that was made by Harab Muslims, it shows that they only picked certain verses from El Quran to recite to the Ethiopian Christians and this is an historical fact. Those verses told about the Immaculate Conception, how Jesus Christos and Miriam or Mariam, the adopted son of Yosef, was illustrious in this world and the hereafter how he was the word and the spirit of Yahweh Elohim Amlak. by that the Ethiopian Nagush or king was so impressed by Jafar's recitation that it brought tears to his eyes the Nagush then told the two Meccans to leave and that they could not take the Mohammedan immigrants Amir, son of Al-As, tried once again to get the Nagush to change his mind by saying there were negative things said about Getach and Iesus. Upon hearing this, the Nagush asked Jafar what else was said about Getach and Iesus in their scripture in the Quran. Jafar replied, we say about him that which our prophet has taught us. He was a creature of God and his prophet and his spirit and his word and a sign of the end of the world which was born to the Blessed Virgin Mary. After this reply, the king of Abyssinia, the Nagush of Ethiopia, welcomed them to stay in Ethiopia as long as they wanted and gave them refugee status there and food, clothes, and shelter. Now this is also the reason why the followers of Ahmed the prophet Muhammad today dress just like Felashian Hebrews of Ethiopia or the Beta Israel. This dress consists of long white robes and shawl with blue stripes and turbans or temtemoj. They got the prayer beads they call subha from the Coptic rosary and this is where they received their holy days. They also received their methodology for praying from the Beta Israel or the Falashas, which is what they originally did. For instance, falling down and prostrating on the ground, according to Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, facing east, which at 
the time was Jerusalem, according to Daniel 6 and 10, and later became known as Baca or Mecca. We must mention here that when Ahmed, their prophet Muhammad, got this call for Zalot or prayer, they always say the angels took him back to Jerusalem and then up to heaven. So that really means that Jerusalem, the Hebrew Mekdes or holy place, was the gate to the Samayat and not Baka, the Mohammedan so called holy place in Saudi Arabia. The point that we're making here is that the Mohammedans in Ethiopia at that time maliciously selected only certain verses from El Quran. In other words, they perverted their very own scripture and